Hey, welcome back to The Monitor. Peter Rubin, senior editor at Wired, and this week we got a lot to talk about on screens, TV shows, TV movies, moving picture shows, but let's start on the small screen and talk about the return of NBC's community. Finally, for a select few viewers, they do not enjoy the highest ratings. Community is one of the smartest, funniest sitcoms on television, and while it is not yet to its six seasons and a movie hashtag battle cry, Four season is starting up this week. NBC delayed it from its original October start from this season and they pushed it to February. That's all right. They pushed it from Thursdays to Friday nights. That's all right. We don't cur. We're just gonna DVR it anyway. Screw you, NBC, at any rate. The weird thing about Community is Dan Harmon, the creator and showrunner, is gone. NBC sacked him last year, so a lot of people were wondering, me included, what was gonna happen to the show. Also leaving were two of the executive producers who helped give the show its character. However, I am pleased to announce that at least with the first episode of the new season, Community is about as community-ish as it's ever been, which is to say weird, which is to say if you've never seen Community before and you watch this episode, you will be wondering what all the fuss is about. But it is, it is, it is really quintessentially community. They do some structural, satirical things. They have a lot of their characters doing very characteristic things. I can't say too much because the show hasn't aired yet and uh, NBC has warned those of us who have seen the episodes not to give away certain points from the episodes. So I will just say that everything that started happening last year is still happening. Yes, Troy and Britta are still together. Uh, yes, Abed is dealing with the fallout from that. Yes, they are back for their senior year and we're gonna see what happens at any rate. That is Thursday, no, that is not Thursday nights anymore. That is Friday nights community on NBC. Let's talk about TV movies. TV movies. Do you love Battlestar Galactica? I love Battlestar Galactica. We all love Battlestar Galactica. That's probably why you're watching a podcast that Wired makes. At any rate, Battlestar Galactica, awesome. The prequel show, Caprica, maybe not as awesome. But now, Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome which is another kind of in-between prequely thing, airs Sunday night as a two-hour TV movie. Now, Blood and Chrome aired in small installments late last year on Machinima, which is a YouTube multi-channel platform, as they are known. Uh, Blood and Chrome follows a young Bill Adama after he gets out of the Academy and when he becomes a Viper pilot. It is, uh, well, it was a 10-part thing, and now it is a two-hour thing, so it takes place uh, after, I believe, the original 70s show, but well before the, uh, the events of the new Battlestar Galactica that, that we all know and love from sci-fi uh, in the past few years. That is Sunday night. I actually did not watch it in installments on Machinima because I knew it was coming and I wanted to wait. Uh, some of the writers who were involved with the show are holding out hope that sci-fi still might take these to take this show to series. So if people watch it in enough numbers, let's hoping we can convince them to do that and get some more BSG back on the air. That is Sunday night on Sci-Fi Network, Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome. Let's talk about a real big screen movie. Okay, so so Steven Soderbergh has been on uh, he's been on a tear, at least a, a, a tear of productivity in the past few years. He has put out a kind of astonishing number of movies, uh, considering how hard it is to make a movie, and it's been not the most even. I mean, he, I, I love him as, uh, as a writer and director, and I think he is a fantastic filmmaker, but I have to admit to being a, a wee bit disappointed by both Haywire and Magic Mike. However, he's brought back together kind of uh, his, some of his favorite performers for a movie that starts this weekend called Side Effects. Uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, who obviously was in Traffic and The Informant, which I love, Channing Tatum, who was in Haywire and who was in Magic Mike, a host of other people. It is essentially a psychological thriller that uses the pharmaceutical industry as its backdrop and as some say uh, MacGuffin. It is Soderbergh's last movie he claims before he goes away for a little while. I don't really know what he's going to be up to, but it sounds like this is your last chance to get your, uh, your Soderbergh fix before an extended filmmaking hiatus. I'm sure he's got other irons in the fire, but for now, if you respect the man's craft, you owe it to yourself to check it out this weekend. That is Side Effects from Steven Soderbergh, also written by Scott Z. Burns, who wrote Contagion, another Soderbergh movie, and the aforementioned Informant, which is one of my favorite Dark Horse Soderbergh movies. So that is this weekend. And also, that is it for The Monitor. We're gonna be back next week with uh, an all new batch of pop culture deliciousness. But until then, inspirational catchphrase here. <laughs>